as well. My name is Jimothy Stubble Bubble. It's good to see you. And uh, I was summoned earlier, actually, because there was a young whippersnapper in the chat who said, many people are concerned there are too many Zergs in the top eight. What is your opinion? And I actually wanted to take a few minutes to discuss something called statistics. And in uh, the thing known as statistics, uh, I'm going to give you a little story to start with here. Okay, here's the statistics. Yes. Okay. Statistics. Stati statistics. Okay. Here's how it works. You're going to start <clears throat> with a coin. This is a normal quarter. Okay? You have a normal quarter. And you have on the top of the quarter heads. It's, a, it's George Washington's head. And on the other side, we call it tails. Maybe it's the eagle, or maybe it's one of those special quarters of some celebration or special year. It's tails, whatever. We'll call it tails. You could say that if the coin is made properly, there are two sides of even size, and if you flip it, it's about a 50-50 chance. But where does that number 50-50 come from, right? Because if you flip the coin four times and you get heads every time, you throw your hands up in the air and say, this coin is fucked. And then someone might say to you, please don't use such strong language that hurts me. So then you would say, this coin is hacked. But is it? Is the coin actually busted if you flipped it four times and got heads? Is Zerg actually busted if you have 16 players and maybe eight of them are Zerg and you have six in the top eight? The answer is maybe. Maybe it's busted, but the sample size is incredibly minuscule. Let's talk about sample size, okay? I'm going to give you two numbers, all right? And one of these numbers is large. The other one is small. And if you want to have a good sample size, you want to have a large sample size, okay? Here's two numbers, all right? 17 billion. Four. Which of these is large and which of these is small? Okay. Let's say, let's say you had a tournament, a big tournament, the biggest StarCraft tournament in the history of the world. And you've got 17 billion players in it. All right. You've got Zergs, Terrans, and Protosses. And 17 billion players compete. And at the end of it, when you've got the top 16, they're all Zergs. All right? This is case one. 17 billion players. And in the top 16, you ended up with all Zergs. Let's, let's do a different scenario. It's an invitational tournament with 32 players. And in the top 16, you've got all Zergs. One of these is more concerning than the other in terms of assessing and balance, right? The one that has an invitation of 32 players, I mean, yes, having all Zergs, that's quite the thing. That would be quite the thing because you had at least half Zergs in the Invitational, and they all made it. That's a, that's a pretty big deal. But when you have 17 billion, and it's still Zerg favored, that is a large sample size, which adds to the power of the claim that Zerg is overpowered. And the problem that we see here consistently on the StarCraft subreddit is that they will have 
a very, very small uh, sample size. And they will make large claims as though they had a huge amount of power with a massive sample size. But that's the problem, isn't it? StarCraft is ridiculously hard, and the number of players who are able to compete at that high level is not very large. The best of the best of the best outclass pretty much everybody else. So if it was a, a tournament with every person on Earth, you would still probably see those same people at the top because there's just that much skill in the game. So it's really tough, right? It's tough to assess the balance of the game. I would say that at the current year in Legacy of the Void, between Zerg, Terran, and Protoss, it seems like it's more balanced than Broodlord and Fester. It's more balanced than when Adepts first came out in Legacy of the Void. It's more balanced than when Charge dealt like 60 damage on impact in the beta. It's more balanced than the Mass Swarm Host era of the game. It's more balanced than when Battlecruisers first got their huge rework and boost in power. But it's still not perfectly balanced, right? And for you, the common player, the person who's just boxing at their level, we're not playing this and paying rent with our tournament winnings, but we play the game and we enjoy the game, right? And we see the highest level of play. And we see at the highest level of play, it's not 33-33-33 for Zerg, Terran, and Protoss in the top eight. And that would be really hard to do because it doesn't divide nicely. If it was a top nine and you had three of each, Imagine how happy people would be. That would be so happy. But then there can only be one winner, right? So then people are going to be upset again. So let's call this, let's call this a Jimothy's Razor. Whenever there's a tournament that has results, StarCraft people, some of them will necessarily complain about it of any outcome. For any StarCraft tournament, there will always be complaints. This is a fact. It is. It's been demonstrated every time. But then the other part of this would be if you can complain, should you? This is the tricky one, right? Because, because... Sometimes, if it is actually super broken and you are part of the voices that get it changed or nerfed, then that was a productive use of time, perhaps. But if it's not really as broken as you think and you are actually losing games because you are bad, then it is a huge waste of time and you should focus on not being supply blocked instead. But there is a sense of uh, social camaraderie in, you know, getting out your pitchforks and having a protest, right? That's, that's a community building experience of we the Protosses would like to complain about uh, Zerg together. Or we the Terrans would like to complain together. Those are examples where you can have a sense of, like, kinship with them. They're dealing with the same cheeses that you are in the same matchups and stuff. But StarCraft is a personal quest. It's a personal quest where you are in a battle against your own bad habits and mistakes. It's you against the past who. You're trying to be a better player every day, if you can. If you can. You're trying to gain a little experience. You're trying to practice a little bit. And hopefully, also, have fun as you go. That's what it's really about. It is a personal journey of you, the smart young whippersnapper who you are, who is facing the most try-hard, dedicated, and focused gaming community in all of esports. And you want to move up on the ladder. That is a monumental task. One that is 
extremely difficult and multifaceted. And I would argue that one of the least important facets of moving up in the ladder is bitching about things outside of your control. I believe that it is more about ownership of your own mistakes. If you open up a replay of your own, you could find at least a dozen mistakes if you looked hard enough. Maybe two dozen, maybe even as high as three dozen. And if you have this serious focus, you pass the people who are complaining, right? Because say you've got an hour, you have two people and you give them both an hour and you say, okay, person A, for this hour, I want you to complain about TVP for this whole hour. And for some people, they'd be like, oh, that's I was already doing that. So they just do that for an hour. And then for the other person, you say, okay, for this hour, I want you to go over two of your replays that you lost. And I want you to write down two mistakes that you made from each game that you could work on. Which of these two players do you think is going to have a better, more productive use of that hour? Person A, who complained about PVT. Person B, who went over two games in replay analysis and took some notes. Which do you think? A or B? In my opinion, it would strongly flavor, uh, favor Sorry, player B. They're putting in work and effort to change something about themselves. It's within their sphere of control. There are clear points of data that can be browsed and lessons that can be learned and implemented moving forward. The chat said a mixture of A, B, and I don't remember what the question was, so we're just gonna go with B. Person Z, yes. Well, I hope that was a, a, a little helpful in breaking down the discussions about uh, tournament results, balance whining versus improvement, and also just the general sense of uh, sample size. Sample size is just, it's like the thing you learn on day two of your statistics class. So I don't know if people skipped their statistics class, they didn't take their statistics class, or they forgot their statistics class, but this is basic stuff here, right? You've got five pieces of data. You don't have that much power when it comes to making bold claims, but people do it all the time. You have a friend who's sad that there are no Protoss players in the final eight. Let me tell you what, there are a lot of things to be sad about in the world. When I think about the mass hysteria and the complete and total panic and collapse of society with the coronavirus pandemic and all, and all the people who are high risk and people who lost their jobs and things like this, when I think of things to be sad about, the fact that there are no Protoss in the top eight of a tournament, it, you know, it doesn't really register super high on that scale, but I could see that, you know, I could see that. This is live. Is this live? Is this on? I don't know if it's on. Is it still on? Hello? You took stats. It's all about sample size. Yes, that's, that's it. You got it. You were awake in class. There are no Protoss players in the top eight because there aren't any super high level replays to copy the feels. No, I, I, I get that. I get that. Yes, I, I have done that myself when I would open up a, a replay and it's like, oh, I see this. This Zerg is against this style. I suck against this. This is going to be good. I'm going to see how to beat it. And then, the Zerg, and then the Zerg just gets totally run over. It's like, well, uh, I guess I'm not alone. <laughs> you were told uh, there would be a zero. Yes, we're going we're gonna to go over more uh, zero games here in a minute. I was, I was summoned. Uh, Miss Aquil said, Jimothy, help us with statistics. So I did. And now we all have learned about statistics with Jimothy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for supporting the neuro-related products. 
hair shampoos and websites and, and so on. Yes. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. It's, it's always nice to hang out with you guys. My name is Jimothy Stubble Bubble. And remember, if you lost at StarCraft, you fucked up. You just... <laughs>